Thank you very much for joining me for this review. What I'm going to talk about in this video touches on perhaps one of the most emotive and divisive topics that surrounds a hobby um, of Warhammer 40,000 uh, and in particular Forge World miniatures uh, and that is of recast miniatures. Now, be so before I do this review, um, I think I just need to make a couple of points to preface what my opinions are and give the context behind um, what I'm going to show you today. The first thing um, is a little bit of the macroeconomics 101. And in any marketplace society, you have the principle of supply and demand, uh, which controls the flow um, and availability of goods. So you create a demand for a good, or a demand exists. Um, you, a manufacturer, creates a supply to meet that demand, or several manufacturers do. Uh, and an equilibrium point is reached within the marketplace of a desirable price point to pay. And, and, that, and that basically is the idea of balancing all the economic factors out against each other. So the manufacturers make sufficient profit um, to work, operate in that market together um, and also exist in competition with one another at the same time as meeting the supply of the consumers. So that, that's a very fundamental principle. And if you disrupt um, the balance of supply and demand, then you'll create, well, outliers to that model, won't you? Um, and in particular, um, I'm going to reference this in the case of limited edition or limited run Games Workshop models. So um, recently with the re-release of Warhammer 40,000, um, me and my friend have started looking into how to do some Warhammer 40k gaming and also doing it, doing it in the style of the Rogue Trader rulebook as it was originally written. And one of the themes of that game is a more sort of RPG style nature of play and the idea that you have Imperial agents supported by retinues of troops. That led me to think about what, what Imperial agent I would want um, as a core of my force. After thinking about it a bit, I decided upon the idea of an Inquisitor. And that, of course, then led me to look at Inquisitor models that are available, those that have been produced both by Games Workshop uh, and Forge World. And after doing quite a lot of research, I found a model that I really liked, suited the style I wanted for the character, and also my own aesthetic of what I want in, a, in an Inquisitor. Uh, and this model is of the Inquisitor uh, Gideon Law. So I was happy to find that. Uh, however, I was not so happy when it, I found that Gideon Law was, uh, has been out of production for a long time and was, uh, as far as I can tell, last available as a limited edition miniature at a Games Day event. And coming back to my analogy of supply and demand economics, uh, the supply has been very, very tightly constrained, um, which has caused an adjustment in the price. And you're probably looking, as of when I shot this video, at paying between 42 and £50 pounds for a, an example of this model on eBay, which was more than I was prepared to spend on this particular endeavour. I was kind of at the point of abandoning that idea when... As I was searching on the internet, I came across a, um, a company who is doing reproductions of the Gideon Law model. And I looked at this and they're recasting these in resin. And I was very impressed by the quality of the model uh, and also reading testimonials on the website from customers, which were all very positive. Now, I take those with a pinch of salt because, of course, we're talking about the internet here and things that appear real may not be real. Um, but given the fairly reasonable asking price and the fact that there was some clear pictures of what the product was going to be, uh, I decided to spend the modest amount and see what I would get because I really wanted Gideon Law for my force. And this is what we have here. So that's the first bit of the preamble. The second bit of the preamble is this touches on... So, yeah, so the first thing is, well, why, why have I bought this? It's because Games Workshop don't make it anymore. Uh, I would quite happily and readily pay 
Games Workshop for this model if they made it, but they don't, so I can't. So that half of the supply-demand bargain has broken down and other, old, other avenues have uh, opened up. So I guess the next thing is around just touching on the point of recaster. So my personal view on this is that, and I wouldn't buy recast products of anything that is currently produced by Games Workshop or Forge World, uh, and that's because it's undermining the whole business model that allows our hobby to exist. Um, the reason that we have all these fantastic games, models and miniatures is because Games Workshop has built an economic machine or economic model for its business that allows it to employ some very talented and diverse artists and sculptors um, to create the models that we so like. Um, and also the writers who create the universes that we like to game in. So I don't buy recast models of anything that's in production because I see that as undermining that economic model and damaging the future uh, development of the hobby. So in this instance, this miniature has been bought from a recaster who seems to do fairly low volume work, um, mainly of out of production models. However, there are some in production models that they do make. So from my perspective, I although I bought this model from this person, I don't support them selling miniatures or copies of miniatures that are still in production by Forge World or Games Workshop. So there you go, that is my preamble. But that said, let's have a look at this. Um, you may notice some Cyrillic um, alphabet there, and that's because this has come from uh, Novibirsk. Um, in Siberia within the Russian Federation. So um, a slightly different location to what I'm uh, used to getting models for. So let's take a look at this model of Gideon Law. Now this has been cast in resin. The original model was in metal. I don't believe Games Workshop has ever um, produced Gideon Law in resin. It's not a Forge World model. So I have a box with some sort of badge on it now. I guess the next question is, uh, where does one get into this intriguing box? Aha, uh -huh. here we go. Hmm, I wonder if I'm making a hash of this. Oh, oh dear, I was making a hash of it, there we go. Right, so we have a box and we have some paper packaging. Let's take some paper packaging away and hopefully somewhere in amongst this tangled mess of paper we will find a miniature and here we go. And here we have, as I said, a an example of Gideon Law, an Imperial Inquisitor. So let's open this guy up. Take a look. So it's a two-part model. Uh, it's been supplied with a with a base. It looks a fairly standard for twenty-five mil base. Um, right, let's take a look at this. So first impressions. Well, first impressions I must say is wow. Gosh, this is a. Gideon Law is an absolutely fantastic model, and yes, I'm uh, I'm very pleased I chose this guy uh, to use in my Rogue Trader Force. He's armed with um, the reason I chose Gideon Law is Games Workshop and and Forge will do a lot of Inquisitor models and. These are all, I mean, there's a real variety of the weird and wonderful and they're highly individualistic miniatures as well. However, a lot of them for me are just a little bit too ostentatious, a little bit too frilly and a little bit too over the top. Um, this guy on the other hand, for me, just gets the balance right between the individuality, but also looking like something or someone you could actually imagine working in a practical real world sense. And that's why I chose that's why I wanted Gideon Law so much. 
Uh, and having the model here in my hand, looking at it now, just reinforces um, that earlier view. And what a beautiful model this is. The casting quality is extremely good. Um, I can see, I can't even see a mold line on this. Um, no, I can't even see a mold line. Maybe just a little touch of something down here. But little's the operative word. And everything looks very crisply turned out. And it really does the, the original sculptors work a lot of justice. Um, this Gideon Lord does look great. And he's got this fantastic wide brimmed hat, which, um, puts me in mind of um, some old Hammer horror films and others, but yeah, a great look. And he's got the, Inquisi the Inquisition amulet around his neck, a th uh, like a, th a dagger needle, some equipment, perhaps a heresy detector. <laughs> um, he's armed with a plasma gun. In the in game, this, I mean, you know, that, what better weapon for an agent of the Empire than a a compact plasma gun and you would imagine in the current 40k rule set that would be a master crafted weapon for someone of this stature and office but he also has a bit of a look of a an inquisition an inquisitor of the catholic church um with the design of the robes and the gowns which is very um which is very nice so yeah i think that Gideon Law, or whatever I choose to call him, um, is going to be a very nice leader of my Rogue Trader expeditionary unit, whatever it may be made up of. There's a second part in the model. Let's see, all right, so there we go. And there we go, and then that attaches in there like so. Um, and again, this hand looks beautiful, I'll cast, whoops, just dropped it there. Careful, Mr. Leaky Cheese, don't wanna break this nice model. It's come along, come, come too far to be broken. Yeah, very good. And he has a suitably impressive finger of Imperial authority going on there, which almost looks a bit like a weapon, which you know, you could argue the pointing of an Inquisitor is indeed a weapon of sorts. And if we just... It's not going to fit. Ooh, it's a bit tight there. I'm not going to slight push that in. I uh, don't want to damage model, but yeah. But yeah, there you go. Um, a recast version of Gideon Law. The only way to get hold of a new example of this miniature at the moment, as far as I can tell. But yeah, beautifully well done. Absolutely exceptional miniature. The original sculptor did an absolutely fantastic job on this. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Something a little bit different. Um, do remember, um, bear in mind my initial comments before uh, engaging in any flaming around uh, recasting, etc. Do weigh those comments up. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'll speak to you next time and goodbye.